make sure this is working. Hey everyone. Just trying to set this up for the first time here. Let's see if we could go full screen with this. Never actually done this before, so this is all new. Close my door. So, I'm Ben Worst, I'm with Conserve Wildlife Foundation of New Jersey, and I'm here broadcasting live on YouTube, I hope, for the first time ever. Took a little bit to get figured out here on my Mac, but uh, I'm here to answer your questions, and you know, if you have anything to say, we have a chat here where you could basically ask questions, and I could answer you live, uh, and also type responses, but you know, here just to talk about, you know, falcons in New Jersey and, you know, basically answer questions that anyone might have about, you know, specifically uh, the Jersey City peregrine falcon nest site and uh, the ones there in Elizabeth at the courthouse. So, you know, uh, if you have any questions, please ask. But, you know, basically, uh, you know, I would, I would say that I could possibly, uh, you know, uh, screen share here too where you can see what I'm doing on my computer here but uh, I don't know really how to do that right now but maybe if we do this again maybe I can do that but uh, it's an exciting year at least so to say for the nest that we have in Jersey City because uh, the pair there uh, have their first chick this year so if you're watching the camera right now well, I guess you're watching me, but if you're watching that too, uh, you know, it's the first time that they've had young uh, in three years. So pretty exciting up there because, you know, the female there has been more than able to be able to produce young over the years and, uh, you know, hasn't until this year. So uh, it's been kind of interesting for us uh, as biologists to watch them because they haven't really had their act together, uh, you know, so... This year they finally have their act together and, uh, you know, luckily they have one chick and they're doing quite well with, uh, with raising that chick. Hey, Mara, can you hear me? <laughs> Hopefully you can. So, uh, so yeah, so that's why we set up this, this Q and A here too, because on Thursday we're, myself and Kathy Clark are going to be uh, driving up to Jersey City to ban the one chick at, uh, all right, good, you can hear me. We're going to ban the chick up in Jersey City, and we would have banned the other chick uh, up in Elizabeth there, too, or, or both chicks, I guess I should say, but unfortunately, both of them died, uh, which is very sad, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things in nature where it's hard to control many things. I mean, multiple nests that I survey uh, in partnership with DEP and the Endangered Species Program also failed uh, to produce young. So, you know, uh, we see it all the time and, and you try not to humanize the birds because you never know what might happen. Uh, you know, one nest is, is located at uh, Sedge Islands, and uh, which is off of Island Beach State Park. And I monitor that nest uh, multiple times throughout the spring. And, uh, you know, I probably went there like six times a spring and, and almost swore that it would be productive this year. You know, it almost had to be. Uh, I, I, you know, because, you know, I, I put so much effort into monitoring these nests and then I, I go there after the chicks had hatched, they had four chicks. And then I went and we were actually going to go and ban the young and, uh, there was nothing. So there was no chicks. So very sad to see, uh, at that site, uh, you know, uh, we don't really know why the chicks died. You know, it's one of those things where you try and determine the cause of death. Uh, or failure of nests. And it's really hard to, because, uh, you know, many things could have happened. And one of them, which I kind of uh, assume it might be, you know, you kind of have to play like a CSI role in situations like this. And, uh, you know, there was actually an interloper, uh, you know, where we went out on one nest check and there was another female that came in and was interacting with the, uh, the resident female, just like what happened up in Elizabeth. So this happens at multiple sites throughout New Jersey. Uh, you know, it's a, a, you know, almost a good sign, I guess, because we have lots of peregrine falcons around. Uh, but we have a question from Cheryl that Mara's writing here. She's wondering whether the male and female from Union County Courthouse will stay together. Will they stay in the area? 
Yeah, falcons in New Jersey, uh, you know, they do not take long distance migrations. Uh, some do disperse uh, from New Jersey and find uh, different territories to occupy. And typically the males uh, stay together or the males, uh, you know, uh, you know, choose the nesting territories basically. And then the females kind of wander more. Uh, but I mean, the, the pair at Union County and Elizabeth there on the courthouse, they will stay there, uh, you know, throughout the whole non-breeding season and uh, they will not leave. Uh, they will not have another clutch. Uh, so they will basically hang out around uh, the building there, uh, you know, in Elizabeth and, and defend their, their territory. Uh, you know, because if they if they're not there, then of course you know other falcons will come in and and take over that nest site. So that's a that's a good question. So, uh, oh, we see that in all territories throughout New Jersey that are established uh, with pairs, basically you know where they they do not take long distance migrations. They hang around all winter. Uh, sometimes they do move. Uh, you know, especially. Uh, young birds, I mean, they, they go, uh, you know, and hang out along the beach, which we see uh, from uh, one of our one of our good friends, uh, Northside Jim, uh, who takes lots of pictures from the beach, uh, especially on Long Beach Island, where we see lots of young falcons go to the beach, uh, because those are areas where, you know, basically there's there's lots of prey for these, these uh, young birds, you know, and, and they're open areas which falcons need, uh, you know, to, to find lots of prey and everything. That's where they do very well. Hey Shana, uh, yeah, we don't uh, we don't really know about uh, the cause of death for the chicks uh, in Elizabeth there, but you know we we do kind of have some theories, I guess. Uh, you know, uh, some early examination has been done by uh, you know Dr. Erica Miller uh, with Tri-State Bird Rescue at Mercer County, uh, you know, Wildlife Center, and basically she determined that uh, with the the second chick that died that it wasn't. Uh, trichomoniasis, uh, so which is one where it could have possibly been treated uh, if that's what it was, but it wasn't that. So that's where the birds end up getting, uh, you know, some some sores and lesions in their in their mouth, uh, in their throat. So uh, necropsy would be able to uh, see those, uh, you know, wounds like that that are associated with that that disease. Uh, which is one that, that falcons get from feeding on pigeons, uh, which carry that disease, unfortunately, and easily pass it on to their young as well. Uh, and when falcons get it, uh, when they're young, they can die. Uh, but one of the things uh, that we're looking at, which, uh, again, has not been determined, uh, but, it, but it's kind of a, you know, best guess of what could have happened. I mean, obviously the chick appeared to have uh, like a neurological disorder uh, or uh, you know, it looked like it, it might have uh, come in contact with some kind of poison, possibly, or avicide, uh, which, which possibly could have been uh, brought into the nest by possibly pigeons, uh, you know, which are, are common in the area, and they were a common food item that we saw there, and, and we see that in Jersey City as well. And it could be where a, a building around the area could be trying to uh, control pigeons by using, uh, you know, an avicide like that, and, you know, potentially that could have been passed on to the to the young falcon there. Uh, but we don't know because we haven't gotten toxicology results yet. Uh, so on like the liver, which was submitted, uh, but we will find out, you know, when we do, we'll definitely let everyone know. Uh, so we hope that that is not the case because this is why we have falcons in urban areas and why they thrive because they're a natural uh, predator, you know, and, and control for these for these types of pests, uh, like pigeons and, and starlings and house sparrows and other small, uh, you know, not invasive, but non-native species. Yeah, rat poison, you know, uh, Hawksy there uh, commented, you know, about hawk poison. I mean, uh, or sorry, not hawk poison, but I'm getting it all mixed up, but rat poison, uh, you know, that's where it would be, not rats, but, uh, you know, because they, they feed on birds, uh, you know, but but rat poison definitely happens in many other cases of birds of prey where they, they forage on mammals. Uh, so, you know, we see that as well, too, you know, and, and uh, you know, even lead poisoning is another uh, threat to birds of prey. So this is just another one of those cases where, you know, we won't know until we actually get the toxicology results. And when we do, hopefully it'll shed light on this and hopefully we can identify uh, where possibly it could be coming from. You know, so people need to have, uh, 
you know, give out notifications when they're putting this stuff out, uh, you know, and, and hopefully we can even track it down and hopefully it's not Union County that's even doing it around there uh, and that they know this, you know, and, and that there's the potential to harm the birds, uh, you know, that are nesting on the building there too. So it could be one of their neighbors who aren't so bird friendly, I'm sure. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, otherwise, you know, in, in general here in New Jersey, uh, you know, we're getting towards the tail end of the breeding season for falcons, uh, you know, both Union County uh, in Elizabeth and uh, the nest in Jersey City started very late uh, in, in comparison to many other nests, uh, you know, falcons at other nest sites, we have around 30 active nests in New Jersey. And most of those chicks uh, are around the age uh, to fledge right now, which is around six to seven weeks old where these guys are a little behind right now uh so which isn't a bad thing you know it uh you know uh it's a it might be a little bit hotter you know uh like some people were concerned about uh the chick there in jersey city with it being very hot you know on that rooftop uh with that chick uh last week there but uh but uh you know that chick just did just fine you know and, and uh, even watching that chick right now i have it up on the side here and uh you know, it's, uh, it's doing what babies do, you know, they, they eat and sleep, uh, you know, so. <laughs> sound at the Union County nest. Yes. I mean, the sound is really great. You know, if anyone watching the Jersey City Falcon cam, you know, that was really one of the things that we knew we had to have when we took over the camera from New Jersey Fish and Wildlife. I mean, it really adds, uh, you know, so much uh, depth and, and user or viewer experience into it, you know, where, you know, in Jersey City, you could hear ambulances, uh, you know, going by and, and the sound of the chick bagging and everything, uh, where, yeah, you, if you don't have that, you know, you kind of, you know, you just, you have to kind of imagine what it sounds like to, to actually be there. But in Jersey City, you know, you really hear it and you see what it's like, you know, to uh, hear these birds interact with each other, especially between the young and, and the adults. And, uh, you know, then you can even hear them if they're off camera, too, you know, because uh, in many cases, that's what happens, you know, where you hear the, you know, you hear the adults calling to each other and everything. And, uh, you know, then the chick there as well. And, uh, and yeah, you know, when we have that in, uh, in Elizabeth there, then, then yeah, you know, it'll definitely add to it. And it's very easy to do, you know, so uh, they'll be able to do it no problem. And now the nest has, uh, you know, the nest has failed. I mean, they'll definitely be able to install a microphone there, uh, you know, very easily. It's just one wire, basically. Well, two wires, I guess, technically speaking, but, uh, you know, and, and a little weatherproof microphone. So, uh, you know, now that they, now they can work on the camera and everything to improve it for next year and, and look forward to broadcasting again, uh, you know, under better circumstances and a new nesting season from the beginning with this new female there. So hopefully, uh, you know, on Thursday, uh, we'll have lots of people to view the live stream that we're going to do when we're banding in Jersey City, uh, which we're going to do on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash wildlife NJ. Uh, you know, we're going to be streaming from the beginning to the end and, uh, you know, we're really going to, you know, give people behind the scenes kind of look at, uh, you know, 101 Hudson Street as well and, uh, you know, can show you everything because that is, uh, you know, the oldest uh, wildlife streaming camera in New Jersey. Uh, there's no other camera that's been around for uh, over 15 years and it's been streaming online for that long as well, too. Uh you know, uh, Hawk, as far as, uh, yeah, streaming the camera year round, uh, I, I mean, I know Jersey City Falcon Cam, uh, we usually shut down after the nesting season, uh, just because, you know, uh, we could keep it on because the birds stick around, but they're not always at the nest site, uh, you know, but, uh, we usually shut that down for around, uh, you know, maybe six months or five months out of the year, just because, uh, it's very expensive for us to be able to keep uh, you know, our Comcast uh, internet going uh, year round and, uh, you know, then the, the streaming costs and everything associated with that. Uh, but, uh, you know, now that, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, sponsored by Matt Cowley, uh, you know, then, uh, which is uh, where the, the nest is atop that building in Jersey City, maybe we will keep it on, uh, but we'll have to see if people really want that. And Elizabeth, I mean, yeah, uh, 
you know, if Union County wants to keep it on year round, then, then they might, you know, uh, but that's up to them. Uh, you know, if people want to see that, then I'm sure they'd, they'd probably uh, keep it on. You know, they probably have much more resources involved with county government where they can keep it on year round and can, you know, uh, those costs are not great for them as they are for us being a nonprofit organization. So, yeah, the Internet cost in Jersey City alone is, oh, it's like around $130 a month, you know, for Comcast business and you know, that's one of the things we pay for to keep this on. I mean, when we took it over from the state of New Jersey, when they were when they were uh, paying for it, uh, you know, back in the, you know, it started like uh, in 2000 or 2001, you know, we learned how much they were paying. We just couldn't even believe how much it was, you know, because back then Internet was, uh, you know, a new thing almost, you know, and, and especially streaming camera, you know, they're, uh, you know, we had like dial up and you know, uh, DSL and stuff. So they were paying for like a T1 connection, I guess. And it was like thousands of dollars they were paying per month. Uh, you know, we just couldn't even believe it. So, <laughs> hey, Stephanie, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's see, we have another question here. Is the chick in Jersey City having enough food so far? Seems hungry all the time. Well, we think he is actually a she. Uh, so... Uh, we think that's going to be a female falcon when we measure her. She looks pretty plump and big. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just saw a feeding at 9 a.m. Uh, I mean, we're definitely not worried about her. And even that feeding, too, when I saw her being fed, she already even had food in the crop, too. And so she had more food. I mean, you know, there being only one chick in that nest, uh, you know, when we see chicks with three or four young that still survive to fledge, uh, you know, that I'm not worried about that bird, uh, you know, not having enough food. Uh, she's had plenty of food so far and, and, uh, it's really great even seeing her now with, with, uh, you know, her, uh, her size and everything too. And, and you could age her by her feather growth, uh, you know, and you could see her flight feathers coming in there on her tail and, and her wings and everything. So, uh, you know, so everything is looking just fine with her and, and the amount of food that she's getting. And even some people I saw on, on our, our, uh, our chat on our website there where the cameras are where people were kind of concerned about her uh the nest conditions you know where where they're uh you know uh dirty and everything i mean you know uh yeah she's confined to a nest box uh but on a cliff or a ledge she'd be pooping all over the sides of that as well and uh in other nest boxes where you know they're in the same kind of situation uh they're even more dirty uh where they have more young and that's why they you know, poop, you know, pretty far, <laughs> you know, and, and get it away from themselves. Otherwise, you know, with it being on the walls and everything, you know, it's not something to be concerned about when they have it all over themselves or their butt, uh, then that means there's a problem. Uh, but otherwise, you know, uh, you know, the nest box is, is pretty clean considering, uh, you know, nest boxes where they have three or four young. So, hey, Betty, she's here. Tilly has a question. How can I get the small falcon in my yard to quit sneaking up behind me and lightly touching my shoulder? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice, you know? So, any other questions? Come on. You have a biologist who's been working with falcons for 12 years now in New Jersey. So, uh, you know, I guess I'll even just talk a little bit about that, about what I do, you know. So every year during the nesting season for falcons, uh, you know, during the beginning of the season, we actually go out to nest sites. Uh, we have around uh, 10 in southern coastal New Jersey where I work uh, in Ocean County, uh, Atlanta County, and Cape May County that we monitor. And, uh, you know, we go out and do nest checks for them. Uh, during the beginning of the, the nesting season and clean out the nest boxes. So we do maintain these nest boxes, uh, you know, especially more than just the ones in, in urban areas like that. They're a little bit harder to get to because uh, it's much further away from where I work. But, uh, you know, they tend to clean themselves out as well, too. But uh, down in southern coast New Jersey, we go out, clean nest boxes, we add gravel, uh, we you know, do any kind of maintenance to the towers, which are, which are old hacking towers and, uh, hacking was done for them, uh, back in the 1980s where, uh, Pete McLean, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Larry Niles and, and Kathy Clark, uh, all legendary biologists here in New Jersey, 
uh, reintroduced Falcons uh, in partnership with the the Peregrine Fund uh, at these towers, uh, and uh, and now these towers are actually uh, homes for falcons uh, here where they nest in uh, igloos, and you know this is where the core of the population nests on these old hacking towers. But uh, but uh, after we maintain the towers, then you know once pairs uh, start nesting, which is usually in you know, usually starts in, in March uh, and then in April, uh, usually they have eggs, but uh, but we go out and put these motion activated cameras inside the nest boxes, uh, kind of like the pinhole camera that you see in Jersey City. Uh, but uh, this one is actually powered by a battery and it, uh, it allows us to be able to capture the leg bands of the adults uh, and then we could actually identify them. And really, that is uh, one of the one of the most important reasons there for banding young falcons, and why we're going to Jersey City is because if we wouldn't actually handle these birds for the short amount of time that we do, when they're young, before they can fly, then we'll know nothing about them when they become an adult. Uh, you know, and, and there's a lot of people who are against banding and everything, but. Uh, we learn a lot of information about these birds uh, when they're banded, when we get resightings of them at these different nest sites throughout New Jersey, and then of course then we do at different areas throughout the state, uh, and then including uh, other areas throughout, you know, the U.S., uh, in New York, and, and uh, you know, uh, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania, and Maryland, and Delaware, where falcons are banded as well, too. of treating trichomoniasis. Uh, yeah, I mean, so the chick in, in Jersey City was treated. Uh, they're given an antibiotic. Uh, so uh, Kathy Malik uh, from the Raptor Trust visited the nest site, uh, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago now. And uh, we will treat the chick again when we go on Thursday. She'll be, giving an, she'll be given another dose of antibiotics then with some, some raw chicken. Uh, it's like a, a spa treatment for falcons. Uh, so... Uh, but there really hasn't been any evidence of it, even in the, the chick there in Jersey City, at least not that we've seen. You know, you'd seen kind of, you know, uh, you know, some, it would be, the chick would be dirtier on the mouth and everything. That's how you could kind of see it from the outside. But we will still prevent it or preventively, uh, you know, treat that chick for a trick. Uh, yeah, any, uh, so we're going to ban uh, the, the young falcon there in Jersey City on Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, or starting at 10 a.m. We're going to be streaming on our Facebook page, uh, which is facebook.com slash wildlifenj. So, uh, you know, after we stream too, we'll still be on our page, so you'll be able to watch it after the fact as well too. So, uh, so for anyone that misses, uh, you'll be able to watch. And also the, the cams will be going as well. But for a time... You know the cameras will still be streaming and on the rooftop and the chick won't be there so uh, we don't want anyone to get alarmed or anything when the chick is missing uh, so uh, you know that means that we just had the chick inside so basically we're gonna go up to the rooftop there uh, which is like I think the 41st floor uh, 101 Hudson Street and we're gonna take the chick inside the building and that's where we're gonna ban that chick you know and uh, and you know give it the medication for trick and everything and then put it back in the nest box and everything as well So Hawk has another question. Yeah, the first uh, first chick there smothered. Would it have been prudent to remove the first female's two eggs while Cain had the two chicks and was sitting on another egg? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's hard. You don't really want to in interfere too much uh, with these birds. Uh, you know, generally speaking, with other with other you know nests, not only falcons but also ospreys in New Jersey. You know, if situations arise like this where things could go wrong, uh, we generally uh, tend to hold back and, and just watch because we at least have a camera where you can see this uh, or things like that happening. You know, I mean, with, with that chick kind of being uh, smothered there, I mean, you know, that was more so uh, the female uh, who was like dragging the prey over, over the chicks. You know, uh, I mean, I at least was watching that first feeding there and, uh, you know, it definitely was, uh, you know, kind of just showed how that female was obviously inexperienced, you know, with, with uh, you know, how to treat her young there. Uh, and, and she'll learn from that as well, too, you know, so, uh, you know, and, and uh, they will nest again, you know. 
But uh, but with other cameras too, you know, like even our Osprey cam, you know, if they bring in trash and stuff, and and uh, you know, I mean, we've had situations where, uh, you know, the adult Ospreys at our Osprey cam, you know, they had a, the handle of like a, a single use plastic bag wrapped around the adult female's neck, you know, and, and it was all being broadcast live online, and and uh, you know, obviously you wanna you wanna do something to help, but you know, you have to realize that when you go up there. Uh, you know, you're causing a disturbance and, you know, then you cause that, that adult or whatever, uh, to fly off, uh, you know, very quickly too, where she's alerted, you know, and everything. And, and she obviously thinks she's in danger, you know, cause you're disturbing them. Uh, you know, they leave more quickly and, and with the Osprey, you know, she could have taken off and with the dragging the plastic bag could have gotten into a situation, situation where she got hurt. Uh, and you definitely don't want an adult to get hurt, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, in, in Elizabeth there, you know, it's hard to really know what would have happened if, if the eggs from the, you know, the previous female would have been removed, you know, uh, you know, but you really want to try and not interfere with them. I mean, uh, you know, it's just amazing for us, you know, more so just to see, uh, you know, that, that new, this new intruder come in, you know, into Elizabeth there and lay her own eggs, uh, you know, right after, uh, you know, uh, you know, taking care of the, you know, the resident female there and, and, you know, she's not wasting any time. We're in Jersey City, uh, you know, 41AX there. It's taken her three years to, to lay eggs and actually hatch young. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think the ones there and or the pair and, and Elizabeth are going to be very, very fruitful uh, birds. So... Hey, Carol. Any comments on the behavior of Cadence and the resident male nesting this year and the behavior now? I haven't watched in the past couple days. You know, I've just been so busy with everything else going on. Uh, you know, I was out at Sedge Island for like two days uh, doing Osprey tours and other education work with them. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so I haven't really watched. Uh, but, I mean, basically... You know, I mean, yeah, just because they fail doesn't mean they're going to, you know, uh, separate, you know, they're going to just work on strengthening their pair bond uh, between each other and even become a more faithful pair, I think, uh, now and in the future. You know, I mean, we have, I mean, well, Jersey City, you know, uh, the pair there, you know, were together for years, you know, and that female was like, you know, I think like 17 years old, you know, who was nesting there and, and she was there even after and after she couldn't even lay eggs anymore, you know, so, uh, but, uh, there are many threats for these birds as well, too, so, uh, we shall see, you know, I mean, you know, Kathy and I were looking at, you know, some of the, the previous fledges from Jersey City, just to see, you know, where they've gone and everything, uh, you know, where they were nesting and everything, and there's always things that could happen even after the chicks fledge with regards to, you know, uh, getting injured or killed or whatever, where you hate to see it happen, but it's one of those things where it's, it's hard to prevent things like that from happening. Let's see, just reading what Betty wrote. Lots of drama. Well, right. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, going up there and, and collecting more eggs would just cause more, uh, you know, disturbance for them, you know, after an already stressful time, uh, you know, with all the battles that were going on and everything. So, so right. Betty's, Betty's correct there. I've been posting on both Falcons coming and going. There are two URLs, which I'm the only one posting on the account. So Cheryl has a question here. Is it natural response for the male to dispose of the sick, deceased? That is, uh, you know, yeah, that was interesting to see. I mean, you know, I've, I mean, I've never seen that. You know, I mean, I've been monitoring falcon nests for 12 years now in New Jersey. And, uh, you know, we've never seen that. But that's basically because I don't watch a nest site throughout the whole entire nesting season. So, you know, you know, I mean, I think that is a natural response because they knew something was wrong with the chick. Uh, you know, and they knew it had some kind of uh, neurological or uh, some kind of disease uh, that they knew just to get rid of. So, and, you know, they, of course, didn't want it to die in the nest site. I mean, with the other nests that I monitor, 
in New Jersey, you know, I mean, uh, and the ones that failed this year, you know, when I went back after even knowing that they had young, uh, I found nothing, you know, there was nothing in the nest box, uh, you know, you know, I don't know if, you know, they were maybe sick too and some were removed, uh, you know, or if there was, uh, you know, an intruder that came in and could have possibly killed the young and took them out. Uh, you know, sometimes it's really hard to know what happened, but with that, with the camera there, it was really fascinating to see that response of the adults where they removed it. Uh, and I think that that, you know, is probably something that is pretty common, you know, in other raptor nests too, you know, where they know to, uh, to react, you know, and, and to do something, you know, where it's a form of, of uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, not grieving, but, you know, kind of ending the situation, you know, they were trying to put that chick out of misery by, taking it even when it was still alive and dropping it off the building to, to kill it. You know, they didn't want it to suffer. So <sighs> Lady Hawk has a question here and you're very much welcome. So I'm happy to do this. The hard part was just figuring out how to stream on YouTube for the first time. So we're a little bit delayed here. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm hoping to do this again as well. And maybe I could even like screen share once I actually figure out, how to do that as well too even though i'm watching the chick right now on my on my monitor here in jersey city and you know uh she's just laying there uh you know looking at a nest box so but uh i definitely want to do this with ospreys as well uh because i'm sure lots of people have lots of questions with ospreys and uh you know i mean we could do this for anything you know uh so i can work with terrapins too so make sure when you're driving in coastal areas to be terrapin aware throw that out there but uh how so lady hawk has a question how old is our resident pair uh the the female and her mate uh the female i think is only like a, a two-year-old uh you know so she's very young i mean she's probably uh you know almost like uh you know she's well, yeah, if she's only two years old, she's just able to breed, you know, for her first time. So that's where this year, too, was pretty amazing to see where she did, you know, lay eggs and, uh, and nest for the first, first time. Uh, so very amazing to see for her first, uh, first year nester at a nest, uh, you know, even though she wasn't successful. But uh, hopefully she will be in the future. And her mate, yeah, since her mate is not banded... Uh, we don't know how old he is, uh, and it's the same case there in, uh, in Jersey City, you know, and that's where banding really is, uh, you know, not really critical, but it, it really is an essential tool for biologists to be able to monitor these nest sites and turnover at nest sites uh, where, you know, we do have, uh, you know, birds being replaced on a pretty, pretty consistent basis throughout New Jersey. Yeah, so Betty has a, a question here. Uh, you know, Kathy had said that prey could have been poisoned. Yeah, I kind of touched on that a little bit, and that's where I talked with Kathy uh, last week about this, and that we don't, uh, you know, we don't actually have any uh, concrete results right right now. But we know that the chick there uh, in Elizabeth, uh, you know, did not have trichomoniasis uh, because uh, a necropsy was performed by Dr. Miller. Uh, in uh, at Mercer County Wildlife Center, but the the deliver uh, was sent off for a tox screen, uh, so we could hopefully see what kind of uh, potential poisons or contaminants uh, what you know were in that chick at the time that could have caused the chick to kind of uh, become poisoned or get some kind of neurological uh, disease like that or or disorder uh, after after hatching and everything. Uh, and it's, you know, so once we get the, the talk screen back, you know, we'll definitely let everyone know because, uh, you know, you know, it could have been a situation where, you know, yeah, where the prey, you know, which, which could have been pigeon, pigeon that it was eating, uh, was possibly, uh, you know, given a, an avicide or, a, a you know, a, a poison, you know, and then the, the falcon was, uh, in turn, you know, feeding on that. Uh, prey and then feeding it to the chick and yeah, I mean, you know, the adults, uh, you know, are going to eat this as well too and, and be exposed to it. So, uh, you know, we should be very much concerned if that's the case, but we don't know until we actually get that tox screen back and we can't go pointing fingers anywhere yet until we actually get the concrete uh, results from that. So, uh, 
So, yeah, I mean, and, and you know, you will see the pair uh, continue to, you know, uh, bond in the nest box where they do the bowing and everything, uh, you know, inside the nest box. And that's just them strengthening their pair bond. Uh, you know, I definitely, I definitely think that they will not try for another uh, brood this year. Uh, you know, it's way too late for them. And, uh, you know, we, we like, you know, I don't think we ever see falcons uh, re-nest this late. If they would fail. Uh, so yes, falcons are definitely amazing. You know, uh, you know, we should be lucky here in New Jersey to have as many falcons as we do, and they're all over the state. You know, uh, but not many people really know that because you know they aren't really one of those birds that people really see or look for a lot. Uh, you know, but I know even just driving on some of the barrier islands like Long Beach Island. I mean, you look at almost every water tower in the winter and you see falcons perched up there, uh, which is a very cool sighting, you know, uh, you know, when you're driving along the shore in, in the, the fall or winter. So if you're ever down those areas, definitely look up to the water towers and you'll see falcons, no doubt. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, Carol has a, a question about uh, the falcon in Atlantic City on the old Atlantic Club. Uh, but yeah, uh, that female there is another very old female, and she she does not lay eggs anymore. So uh, over the past few years, Kathy Clark has uh, given her uh, eggs to uh, you know incubate, I guess you could say, but they're they're fake eggs. And uh, this year, uh, Kathy did the same thing again, uh, where. Uh, birds that were nesting underneath the, the Causeway Bridge or Route 72 uh, Causeway Bridge uh, going from Manahawkin to Long Beach Island. Uh, we collected eggs there and we transferred them to the nest uh, in Atlantic City. Uh, and, you know, we're hoping that that female would incubate them. Uh, but, uh, but unfortunately, uh, you know, we believe that the eggs were, uh, in fact, uh, duds uh, so uh, they did not hatch and uh, you know Kathy did bring a chick to uh, the Atlantic City nest site uh, just like a couple weeks ago though so uh, she did end up giving them young uh, because uh, we do want to see that nest continue to, to thrive there in Atlantic City uh, which is on the boardwalk there in the, in the southern part of, of the, the city and we're actually looking at other areas in Atlantic City to uh, to hopefully establish uh, some more falcon nest sites just because you know falcons really do quite well in urban areas uh, And Atlantic City is one of them which just happens to be along the shore and uh, You know much more so than some of the old hacking towers, you know We want to see them hopefully move away from some of those nest sites in the future and you know take up more territories in uh, in more of our urban areas uh, where there's you know many opportunities for them to actually uh, help control some of the, the problem species that we have, you know, uh, that are prey for falcons like pigeons and, uh, you know, starlings and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, I'm sure that uh, you'll have to keep an eye on, on uh, readings from the north side there, Carol, uh, where I'm sure that, uh, that Jim is going to be posting about that because he's been uh, you know, going along with Kathy there now this year. So definitely, you know, uh, keep an eye on the blog there. I'm sure he's probably going to have a post coming up about, uh, about uh, Lady Catherine there. So Stephanie has a question here. I observed the female stepping on the chick's head inside the, the nest. Could that have been a contributing factor to her neurological problems? Uh, no, not necessarily, you know, it wouldn't contribute to any kind of neurological problem like that. Uh, you know, I mean, I think in, in general, though, I think most neurological problems, when they do get things, uh, you know, well, in my experience here and everything, and, and uh, you know, from my knowledge, is that, you know, uh, they could either be born with these problems and they'll die shortly afterwards, or they could get them from being exposed to some kind of toxin or, or a pesticide. Uh, you know, and I think the fact that the adults kind of trampled those young, uh, you know, could have maybe hurt them a little bit, but it definitely didn't, uh, you know, it definitely didn't harm, uh, that second chick in, in any way, you know, uh, and that first one, it's really hard to say what actually, uh, you know, killed that, that first chick as well, uh, 
you know, could just be a combination of factors where, you know, the inexperienced adults, uh, you know, uh, just didn't exactly know uh, what they were doing, you know, uh, and all those factors combined, you know, basically, you know, cause that chick to die. So, but we shall see uh, what potentially caused uh, those neurological problems uh, or the, you know, the, you know, the, with that second chick there. So we shall see. So, any other questions? Did you already talk about the status of Falcons in New Jersey? Uh, I mean, I did a little bit. I mean, I didn't really touch on it too much, but I mean, Falcons uh, in New Jersey, uh, you know, they're, they're stable right now, uh, even though they're listed as uh, endangered during the breeding season. Uh, we have around 30 nesting pairs uh, uh, that actually uh, are active. I mean, the population that I know of, uh, you know, in more recent years has been growing, uh, you know, but the hard part really is just finding out where they're nesting because we have such short staff, uh, you know, I mean, really it's, it's basically, uh, you know, me and Kathy who, uh, you know, and, and more so Kathy than me, uh, who are, are monitoring these nests, uh, you know, and, and it's really hard to, to find uh, new territories unless somebody, you know, or a, a member of the public actually reports them. You know, I mean, we could have falcons nesting underneath many of the major bridges going to barrier islands along the coast of New Jersey. Uh, you know, on they, there could even be some birds nesting on osprey platforms right now, too. Uh, but we don't really know where they're nesting until we could actually get out and find them. And really just the, the lack of funding and staff uh, really, uh, you know, are the hardest things to overcome with, you know, uh, you know, more uh, adequate... Uh, monitoring of all the nests uh you know i mean but yeah we have had many nests uh reported to us uh you know probably at least like three or four new nests now are appearing in different areas of new jersey and in, in some quarries in northern new jersey uh and uh you know and even in more urban areas like up along uh up along the hudson river up there too we have more nests appearing now in like uh, shipping yards uh, so even on, on Thursday after we banned in Jersey City, Kathy and I are going to be stopping at uh, a port in the, I think it's in Newark. Uh, so we're going to be stopping over there to go and look at uh, a site where falcons nested atop like one of the, the shipping cranes, you know. So it's like one of those big crane things that moves around the giant containers for uh, shipping containers where falcons actually nested uh, on top of one of those cranes and... I think it's one that maybe has been decommissioned, so it's not moving, but, uh, you know, we're going to be working with them to, to put a nest box uh, up on one of them. And, uh, but this year they did have uh, eggs and everything, uh, but they, they failed. They were predated by, I think, raccoons uh, or something. Well, it probably was raccoons because whatever it was climbed up the whole uh, shipping container crane and, and predated the, the nest. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, so, you know, as far as, as the recovery in general, I mean, I think it's safe to say that they've recovered. Uh, you know, we'd like to see the Falcons up, uh, you know, in the Palisades region do better. Uh, and really one of the most challenging things now is, you know, just dealing with a lot of the severe weather or uh, nor'easters that we get in May, uh, you know, because they actually do a lot of harm to the Falcons there because, you know, we get, uh, you know, heavy rain and, uh, you know, that comes out of the, the northeast, uh, then, you know, those, those cliffs are northeast facing and, uh, you know, they can wash out nests in a heartbeat there. Uh, and just dealing with some of the other issues with, you know, predators there because they're on natural cliff, cliffside habitat, uh, like great horned owls are, are common predators there along the cliffs and, uh, you know, other things like disturbance at nest sites because, uh, you know, while many people love falcons, uh, there are still some people, uh, which I guess these people might love falcons, but they, uh, they go into nest sites and disturb them, uh, you know, and, and they do it for, uh, you know, reasons where they're doing it for themselves more than the falcons, where they're going in to try and uh, take pictures of the birds and they're end up causing disturbance at these nests and, and uh, flushing the adults off the nests and, and uh, you know, disturbing them. So, yeah, Cheryl, you know, uh, you're definitely welcome, you know, uh, when we had the opportunity to take over at least the Jersey City Falcon cam, 
uh, you know, which I said before is, is the oldest wildlife streaming camera uh, in New Jersey. Uh, we like that, that, uh, that claim there. You know, we couldn't let it go offline, you know, because basically uh, it was maybe like four or five years ago, uh, the Division of Fish and Wildlife said that they couldn't afford to pay for it anymore. Uh, so Conserve Wildlife Foundation undertook a fundraising campaign to uh, install these new cameras, which are uh, these network uh, uh, internet cameras or IP cameras, uh, you know, there, which were much cheaper to run and maintain along the building. And we really couldn't do it, too, without the support of, of uh, people like you uh, and all of our members and donors for supporting that because... You know, we fundraised for that. We, you know, we didn't know if we would make all the money, but we did. Uh, we did quite well. And, uh, you know, uh, doing something like this is really, uh, you know, one of the best ways to actually bring wildlife into people's homes, uh, you know, where otherwise they wouldn't know about them. I mean, even my kids love watching all our cameras, the Osprey cam, the Falcon cam, you know, and then when we're out driving around, you know, my son's like, hey, look, an Osprey nest, you know, uh, so you know, uh, for our, for our children and everything too. I think it's really important to, to share these, you know, with them and, and, uh, you know, and even in schools and everything too, you know, for teachers to share these, uh, it's really a, a, a great tool, you know, to, uh, in this digital age, you know, to be able to, uh, make people more interested in, in wildlife and especially, uh, you know, conserving them as well too, for future generations. So yes, the live banding, uh, will be streamed on our Facebook page. Uh, I'm just learning how to stream on YouTube here. So, <laughs> so I, I'm glad I finally figured this out. But yes, our Facebook page is where it'll stream. And you don't have to be a member of Facebook. I think you can just go to facebook.com slash wildlifenj. Uh, and then if you go, you set an alarm or reminder and go at 10 a.m. Uh, on, uh, on Thursday, then you will be able to watch. Uh, uh, at least I think that's the case. I mean, you or Facebook might say, "Oh, you need to sign up." You know, I don't know. Uh, but uh, but even after the fact, uh, we will save that video and we'll post it to YouTube and everything, so people could see it after the fact. Uh, and we might even throw together a, a kind of our, our own little video, just showing the banding from start to finish. You know, with more behind the scenes kind of going in the building, you know, and everything where we might not stream that live, but. Uh, you know, it's going to be exciting because we're going to have uh, the CEO of Matt Cali there. Uh, we're going to have the, the mayor of Jersey City, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we're going to have some, some good people there who can hopefully help us uh, help Falcons in New Jersey, uh, you know, who can, you know, uh, raise more awareness for them and, and get more people interested in uh, Falcons because, uh, you know, you just wonder how many people who work in Jersey City uh, you know, really know about falcons and the fact that these endangered uh, birds are nesting atop their building uh, is something that we really want to to get out there with every everyone. So even if you're watching and you're on Facebook, please share it, you know, to let all your friends know, uh, you know, it's going to be a great experience for everyone to watch and uh, we hope many people will tune in. So, and I, you know, Doing more Q and A's like this, you know, I'd be more than happy to do, uh, you know, and, and I'll probably plan one uh, maybe next week with Ospreys uh, now that I know what I'm doing. So, uh, so, you know, it'll be a, a good chance for me to to get uh, a little fundraiser that I'll be planning out there uh, for our Osprey project. So, uh, you know, so keep an eye out for that. So we'll we'll post information about that Q and A soon. So yeah, so Carol, right. So that's, um, I definitely want to uh, to do a chat uh, with Ospreys. I mean, I have more experience working with Ospreys just because, you know, I do more work with them. And, uh, you know, in the next week, uh, we'll be starting our annual census of them uh, throughout New Jersey, where myself and probably around a half dozen volunteers actually go out and survey nests throughout New Jersey to try and, and keep our tabs on the, the population here and uh, determine the size and, and health of, of the population. Uh, so let's see, we have Betty with a, a question here. Do you think the population is exploding due to all the recent nest take, takeovers? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if it's really exploding. Uh, you know, I just think that, uh, you know, uh, falcons, uh, you know, are doing well just because one of their prey items is pretty, uh, you know, uh, 
pretty available, which is just, you know, small birds, especially slow birds, uh, like pigeons. Well, they're kind of fast, I guess, but, you know, blue jays, uh, flickers, uh, blackbirds. But, uh, you know, I, I think that it's not only just New Jersey uh, is where falcons are doing well. It's, it's, uh, it's New York as well. And, uh, you know, I think that we're just seeing where falcons are doing very well in urban areas now uh, and their, their, their range is, ex is expanding, you know, uh, because those are, you know, buildings and towers are our most successful nest sites uh, in New Jersey, uh, where then bridges and the cliff sites kind of are lagging behind a little bit just because of those vulnerabilities between, you know, we have weather on the cliffs and predators and the bridges is where uh, you know, they, they tend to do pretty well, but uh, in some cases when they fledge, they don't always fledge uh, and, uh, you know, successfully fledge or some end up on the ground or either on the roadway uh, or in the water if their nest is actually under a bridge, uh, which is what was happening uh, in Manahawkin on the Route 72 site. Uh, last year that that site had uh, two chicks and unfortunately those two chicks uh, ended up in the water uh, and unfortunately died and that's why we removed the eggs from that nest too and put them in Atlantic City but uh, there in, in Manahawkin we're going to be installing a nest platform uh, next to the bridge and uh, the falcons are going to move to that nest site uh, and they'll nest there uh, next year. But uh, it's really hard to say you know uh, with all the nest take takeovers or, or um, you know the replacement rate uh, why it, why it's so high. I mean, I don't think it's super high, you know, I mean, we're just seeing more of it now because it's, it's taking place on camera, you know, so it's, it's out there for everyone to see. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, I'll have to see, you know, I don't really know the rate of, uh, you know, the, the turnover rate, you know, if it's, you know, if there's an actual figure for what that is, if there's an average, uh, you know, I'll have to see if that's something we might even have that in like our, uh, the annual report. Uh, you know, it's probably something that Kathy analyzes, but we are going to be trying to go back to look at kind of like the genealogy and the family tree of falcons in New Jersey, you know, just to see it at different nest sites, you know, uh, you know, where they go, you know, once they, they fledge and, and where they nest in the future. Uh, and that's something that our friend Northside Jim will hopefully help us out with. Uh, hint, hint there, Jim. <laughs> we'll get him on that to do that. So, but uh, let's see. Original female was from JC site. Okay, so there you go. Yeah, so the original female at uh, Union County there was from Jersey City. So, yep. But yes, you know, I'm happy to do this and... Uh, you know, maybe we'll, we'll stay on here for another five minutes or so, and it's been an hour. So if anyone has any other questions related to anything, you know, wildlife related, I'd be more than happy to answer them. So how about even this? If, any, if anyone here watching, why don't you comment uh, on the chat and, you know, take a guess at whether the chick in Jersey City is a male or female. Let's see. You could place your bets. Or you could even, and you should even, and you should even just say why you think it's male or female. We can see how much of an expert you are. Female, yep. Yeah. Because this is this is one of the things that I've learned over the years, and it's still kind of hard for me. I still take measurements. Kathy's been doing this for so long; she doesn't take measurements. I take measurements. <laughs> because I said, what? are you going by me? Hey, I'm, I'm not, I'm not always right. I mean, you know, when I go into a nest site, uh, you know, and I don't know if I could even drop a picture in here, but the picture that you saw for the stream, I think I had a thumbnail for it or you'll see it. That was one nest site, uh, uh by the Mullica river here down near where I live and where I'm broadcasting from. But you know, uh, when I, when you look in a nest, when the chicks are like around the age of the chick in Jersey city, you know, where they're like, uh, you know, getting around like four weeks old, uh, you know, when you look at, you know, three to four chicks, you can kind of see the size difference, uh, you know, because with falcons, uh, their eggs hatch synchronously. So they hatch, uh, in the order they're laid. Uh, but they hatch very closely because the incubate, the incubation doesn't start until a full clutch is laid. 
Uh, so they're all around the same age. Uh, where with ospreys, they start incubating uh, when they lay their first egg. So that's called asynchronous. So uh, they have uh, large age differences where uh, you can see uh, nests where there's a chick that's only a week old, and then you have uh, you know, chicks that are like two weeks old and even a little bit older, like 17 days in that nest. And uh, you know, it's harder to sex the individuals uh, when they're young like that and they're different ages. Where with falcons, you can see it you know, visually because they're all around the same age and we all know that you know, the females are going to be larger uh, than the males. Uh, but some of the things that kind of give it away, I think, uh, you know, and, and maybe I'll be wrong. I don't know. You know, if I'm wrong, then, you know, we shall see. But because, uh, uh, you know, I will measure, you know, or, or, or Kathy will measure, but usually she doesn't need to measure. Uh, I do. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, what we measure is the, the bill length, uh, which is the, and we do the upper bill, the Coleman. And uh, females are usually, well, they're always over uh, 18 millimeters. And that's how you tell if it's a female. And you could also look at the, so things you could even just visually see between males and females in the nest box if there were uh, multiple birds is that, uh, you know, the eyes uh, are much closer together on males. Uh, so that's something to look for. The bill size is visibly smaller. Uh, and so their head overall then is a little bit smaller. And then their, their legs uh, are very thin, uh, you know, compared to a female. The females have very big feet, uh, very uh, thick legs, uh, and that's usually what you could see. Uh, and I think that sometimes, you know, I don't know if this is really, you know, you know, scientific analysis here or anything, but this is just what I've seen uh, anecdotally here that is where just the females have more of a, a yellowish appearance uh, to their legs when they're young, where the males are a little bit more blue. Uh, so that's what makes me just believe, you know, uh, that this chick here in Jersey City uh, is a female. So everybody's betting in the right direction there. So <laughs> she does look big and she's doing quite well. But uh, let's see, Grandma, we're going to be ending soon, but uh, I'd be happy to answer questions after the fact. Anybody could reach me uh, via email anytime. Uh, my email is ben.worst uh, at conservewildlifenj.org. Uh, you know, I should just give a plug to our website here too, uh, which is conservewildlifenj.org. Uh, you know, you definitely should go on there when you're watching the camera afterwards and just look at uh, our Peregrine Falcon Project page where you can learn more about what we do with falcons. You know, you can even read profiles about falcons too to learn more about them. Uh, if you really wanted to delve into more information, uh, you know, we have plenty of it on our website. Uh, from our field guide, uh, you know, which has over, probably over 200 species in it uh, in New Jersey who are listed. But, uh, but yes, Grandma, to ask your, or to answer your, your question there, we are going to medicate the chick uh, for a second time or a second dose on Thursday when we go to band uh, at 10 a.m. So I hope you'll be tuning in to uh, watch the live stream on our Facebook page, uh, which should be fun. So... So, yes, you know, Betty, you know, more than happy to, uh, to partner, you know, with Union County, you know, I mean, I was saying before, you know, uh, in such a, a day and age like today where so many people are connected to our devices, you know, uh, this is one way where we're able to, to really, uh, you know, get more interest in, uh, you know, conserving endangered and threatened species in New Jersey. So, uh, cameras like this are, are key and, and, uh, you know, who knows where we'll be putting cameras in the future. You know, uh, what kind of camera would you like to see? You know, uh, all we have to do is bring in the money to do it, and we can do it. So, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, this has been Worst uh, with Conserve Valley Foundation of New Jersey. You know, uh, thank you all for tuning in here. And this should stay on our YouTube uh, channel here. So, uh, you know, so if you missed out on this, then, you know, if you're watching later, then, you know, thank you uh, either way, uh, but uh, but yes, you know, uh, now I just have to figure out how to end this uh, end this stream here. But uh, but thank you all very much, and hope you tune in to the live banding on Thursday. Thank you.